what about the Democrats? Joining us now from the State House is the Assembly Majority Leader, Lou Greenwald. Assemblyman, good of you to join us. Uh, first of all, your reaction when you heard that the administration was pulling its ruling uh, of the Supreme Court's decision there regarding the stay. Well, Michael, I'm very thankful and very appreciative uh, for the governor's action to pull uh, that decision. Uh, you know, I, th when we passed this legislation in the House, we thought this was inevitable. And I think that, you know, it sends a very clear signal that equal rights will exist for all residents. And it's, you know, what we've advocated for, obviously, for a number of years. This is a uh, time that has come and is certainly very appropriate. It, you know, the, the uh, folks within the same-sex marriage equality movement have told me in the last few days that they will still go ahead in an effort to get an override of the governor's yeah. veto on the Senate side, of course. Do you think they're going to be able to get the votes to do that? Well, I think they should. Actually, I think the governor's actions obviously uh, would probably free up a few of the members on the Republican side. This is an issue that received all 48, uh, received the overwhelming majority of the Democratic votes in our Democratic caucus. We need six votes to have the override. And from a logistic standpoint, I think the override is actually very important because as a lawyer sitting there with a the trial court decision, um, I think we'd want to codify the actions, and I think it would be important to do the override. I think the members of the Republican Party would have that cover now, and I think this is something that we'd be able to achieve. Why do you think the governor did it? You know, I think uh, when you look at how far we've come, Michael, from where we were in 2009 when then-Speaker Roberts actually started talking about civil unions, the progression of this issue, the fact that the more we've talked about it, I think the more people have gotten a comfort level with areas that maybe they didn't really understand before. And, you know, we all know someone uh, who, you know, is uh, gay or lesbian, uh, whether it's a family member, a friend, and I think it's become in more commonplace in New Jersey, and I think it's just something that's very accepted. Um, I think that the, the marriage equality folks have done an excellent job at really sharing those statistics and those numbers and talking to it, not as something that's an unknown, but somebody that you know. And I think it brought comfort level to many New Jerseyans. And you've seen those polls shift dramatically from where it was just four years ago. We just had your Republican counterpart in the chair a moment ago. He is still predicting that the Republicans will take control of the assembly. To that, you say what? Uh, the Mr. Bramnick bet me uh, two dinners, and I'm very hungry. I'm going on a fat. I'm going on a fast, getting ready. So I th I feel very confident in our position. Um, the numbers that we've looked at, the governor has not shown coattails in these races. Uh, his personal popularity does not transcend to the legislative districts. The candidates that we are running uh, are strong personal characteristics of their own. They are very strong and well-known in their districts, and they, much like the governor, have broad appeal that crosses over party lines due to many of the bipartisan efforts that we've worked on together. And I think that I think the Democratic members of the legislature stand very strong to return all 48 seats. And there are those who say that should that happen, that the next speaker of the assembly will be uh, Mr. Prieto and no longer be Ms. Oliver. Uh, who are you supporting? Uh, you know, I've the Speaker Oliver, who's a dear friend and has done remarkable work, uh, I do not believe that she has indicated whether or not she is running again. And we've got an overwhelming number of the members of our caucus that have the greatest respect for her, but are now singling on to a team of Vinnie Prieto and myself as the majority leader, surrounded by many of the components of the Democratic legislative leadership that we have in place. And I hope and, and know that uh, Speaker Oliver will play a significant role in our caucus on issues that she is passionate about, just like former Speaker Albio Osiris did in his transition from Speaker. Assemblyman, have to leave it there. Thank you for coming back on the program, sir. Michael, thank you.